welcome friends we are almost on the verge of completion of this particular course on ip portfolio management and as we discussed that we are trying to summarize our discussions and also we are trying to explore give directions or you can say food for thought where you can see that uh, how ip can create few more interesting outcome considering the current world's problems we started the discussion in our very first session that ip is a very important source for economic development and we all are looking that uh, how to have more and more economic development because we feel that uh, economic development is essential for well being of all of us and ip is considered to be a very important way of uh, economic development which is leading to prosperity which is leading to well being of all of us but unfortunately in this uh, economic development race we have lost we have missed the concept of uh, sustainability we need to see that uh, if environment is not there how we will survive how business will survive what is the role of ip in that case if no society is there so therefore people experts they have started discussions that uh, can ip also contribute in sustainability of the planet we all know there are 17 sustainable development goals which are decided and uh, we are expecting the whole world to make progress on these sustainable development goals and uh, in this particular session we are going to discuss that uh, how ip can contribute in the achievement of those sustainable development goals because it is believed if uh, we achieve these sustainable development goals it will ensure some sort that uh, you will have a better life you will have a longer life longer life of the planet otherwise the kind of uh, environmental challenges we are facing the kind of disasters which are happening we just saw we are recording this course in the year 2024 this is the month of may last month in the april we heard that there is a massive flood in dubai and that massive flood in dubai is natural but there are also theories coming that it is because of artificial rains which country is doing and unfortunately they could not control the amount of artificial rain so it resulted in a kind of a cloud burst so developing the technology of artificial rain can be protected under ip but that technology may result into such type of disasters that is again a question whether all the technologies which are we developing helping us in promoting the sustainability of the planet or not so therefore all such type of discussions we are going to do in this particular session where we are talking of what are the united nations sustainable development goals quickly a brief introduction of uh, those 17 sdgs relevance of sdgs for intellectual property ecosystem then uh, world intellectual property organization wipo has also taken some kind of uh, initiatives to promote sdg through ip then uh, we also know this year in year 2024 we have uh, celebrated world ip day on the theme of uh, sustainable development goals so uh, wipo is taking a lot of initiatives in that direction then uh, there are different types of ip assets so we will see that uh, sdgs role and patents then we will also see another very important type of uh, ip asset that is geographical indicators and uh, how gis can help or in uh, promote the sdgs there are different types of studies which are taking place to see the role of uh, gi in promoting the sustainable development goals so we will be talking about them also in this particular session so as we know that uh, the importance of sustainable development now let me first talk for few seconds what do we mean by sustainability so without any prejudice 
the definitions given by UN or various other agencies, the simple literal meaning of this term sustainable is that something which is long lasting. So, sustainable is something which is long lasting. Now, we can talk long lasting in various perspective. If I am an organization, so I will see that uh, how my organization will be long lasting organization. Can my organization will be surviving for 100 years, 200 years? If I am a country, how my country will survive for longer durations? If I am an individual, how can I live for a longer life? So, there can be different perspectives for this sustainability. So, therefore, when I talk of sustainable development, I see all those perspectives that whoever you are, whether you are an individual, you are an organization, you are a nation, how to have a longer continuity, longer continuity that is the sustainable. And in that development is also important. If you are at a particular level today, if you are here today, this is your per capita income, let us say. So, the sustainable development says that you should be able to have a longer duration also and in this longer duration, your per capita income should also increase. From here, tomorrow you should be here. If you are having let us say some other measurement, if uh, you are consuming let us say this much kilowatt of energy per day, as per of sustainable development tomorrow you will be consuming this much of energy and you should be able to consume that energy for longer period of uh, time. So, you can see sustainable development from different different point of view, but since we are talking of time and increase, time and increase these are the two very important dimensions of sustainable development. Different national governments are setting targets for sustainability improvements ranging from societal inclusiveness to carbon emission reduction. People feel that this longer period from here to here, this is only possible when our environmental issues can be handled and environmental issues can be easily handled if we reduce the carbon emissions. As more carbon going into the environment, it is damaging our environment which is the reason of as researchers says a large number of environmental challenges which our society is facing at the moment. So, uh, UN, WIPO, they all are concerned about uh, making this planet a better place to live. 2030 agenda for sustainable development has proposed 17 SDGs and uh, all of you must be aware that uh, almost all the countries have well accepted these 17 SDGs. Countries are working significantly seriously that uh, they need to improve their uh, sustainability development goal index. In fact, uh, you all can see that uh, there is a SDG tracker available and that SDG tracker gives you real time picture that uh, which country has what score on a particular SDG. So, if possible we will like to show you those uh, SDG trackers also and uh, IP is a critical incentive for innovation creativity we all know and uh, now how in innovative ways we can achieve SDGs. So, the issue that uh, why we are talking of SDG in a class of innovation and IP because we feel that innovation can help achieving SDGs at a much faster rate. If in normal case you are achieving some SDG in 10 years, now if you propel innovations in your thought process, maybe you will be able to achieve the same SDG in 3 years. 
So, your rate of achieving SDGs can become much faster if you are linking IP issues or innovation and creativity with your SDG requirements. This picture gives you complete detail of 17 SDGs which are proposed by UN and uh, interestingly there are few nations which are doing very good on some of the SDGs and few nations which are doing not so good on some of the SDGs. So, collectively the countries which are in the Scandinavian natures for example, Finland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark etcetera these are the top countries doing exceptionally good on the sustainable development goal on all of them more or less. And then uh, uh, there are countries which are mediocres and then there are countries which are lagging their performance on the sustainable development goal. Unfortunately, at the moment uh, India is not in the top performers of uh, its activities with respect to SDGs, but we are expecting that uh, the kind of infrastructure development and other things which are happening in our country, these things may help in promoting SDG in our country also. Considering the large size of our country and considering the small sizes of various Scandinavian countries, it is quite obvious that their scores are much better as compared to India's score. So, SDGs are related to no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work, economic growth, industry, innovation and infrastructure. In fact, there is a full SDG which is related to innovation, then reduced inequalities, uh, sustainable cities and uh, uh, communities, uh, responsible consumption and production. It is very interesting to see that uh, most of the developing nations and uh, low income nations, their scores on SDG is much better for this SDG 12 as compared to various developed nation because of uh, low purchasing power of these uh, developing nations, uh, they are not able to increase their consumption. And you see that uh, this is the fault of uh, uh, let us say our measurement criteria itself I will say that uh, since I do not have money, I cannot buy things and therefore, you are giving me very good score on my ability to responsible consumption and uh, production activities. While those who have money, they are buying in bulk and therefore, they are doing lot of wastages also. I have money, I buy let us say uh, 1 liter of milk, but I am only consuming 250 ml of that uh, and remaining 750 is going waste. So, therefore, my score will go down on this responsible consumption activity. Since I do not have money, and therefore, I am buying only 200 ml, my requirement is 250 ml, but I am able to buy only 200 ml because I do not have money and therefore, you are giving me good scores because of uh, I am not wasting any uh, resources. So, this is the flaw of the measurement criteria. The 13th SDG is climate action, 14th is uh, life below water, 15th is life on land, 16th is about peace, justice and strong institutions. For a good IP ecosystem, we know that uh, a very strong judicial system is very, very important. So, in fact, uh, if uh, you have a good judicial system, it will also ensure uh, a appropriate IP creation in your uh, society and partnerships for goals uh, that is uh, you cannot achieve these SDGs on your own. You need partnerships and therefore, like uh, if uh, India does something good it will have uh, a favorable impact on SDG scores of all the neighboring countries. So, it is impossible that uh, I alone can do or make significant progress in SDGs because we all are sharing our borders with other, other country. So, it is not possible that uh, my actions are limited to me only, my actions will affect my uh, neighboring countries and similarly, my neighbors action are affecting me. So, neither my neighbor nor me alone can achieve these SDGs. If we come together, if we start partnerships, uh, uh, we both will have a better quality of life for 
all the citizens in the area. So, SDG also promotes uh, partnerships for achieving these uh, goals. Now, relevance of SDGs for intellectual property system. Now, relevance of SDG for intellectual property system for that purpose, I will like to give you some important uh, you can say uh, bullet points. One is uh, IP is not requiring any kind of physical substance. We know since beginning of this particular course that uh, IP is intangible and uh, IP is something which is inherently highly scalable and sustainable. Once you develop a technology in your lab, that technology has a potential for commercial application and that commercial application has no limit. You can expand this technology, you can scale this technology as much resources as you have. So, the basic nature of IP is expandable, it is scalable and therefore, I say that uh, without requiring any kind of uh, uh, efforts, you if you have resources, you can scale these activities, but on its own IP is not having any kind of uh, uh, tangibility. IP is supporting the innovation. Once IP is created, you are not reinventing the wheel again and again. You are moving ahead and you are able to solve those problems which are yet not solved. Like uh, we all know there are challenges of uh, smog during the winter season around NCR area. We know that there are problems of stubble burning in Punjab and Haryana, which is considered to be very, very dangerous for the environment of that area. We all know there are so much of crowd of tourism in upper Himalayan regions, large number of mountaineers are trying to go to Mount Everest and it may all lead to significant loss of glaciers. Reports are already available. Now, how to create? You cannot ask all of us that do not do these things, do not do these things, do not do these things. But can technology provide some solutions where we can explore new things also without damaging the environment? So, that all is possible with better innovations in those lines. So, that therefore, IP role is very important in improving the science and technology activities. Otherwise, we will not move ahead and we will keep doing the same thing again and again. IP contributions to the innovation ecosystem. The IP is a fruit of innovation ecosystem and when you get the fruit, it creates a booster dose. It helps you in getting a kind of stimulus and therefore, the IP system, robust IP ecosystem which is in the form of fruit of all my hard work uh, that is uh, improving our uh, ability to achieve the SDGs and uh, it has high level of international acceptance and conformity. Because when you are doing any kind of IP as the process we all know, we have to publish the IP in the journals whether I am filing IP in India or I am going for PCT, whether it is in WIPO journal or our in Indian patent office journals, you have to disclose all your technology and therefore, whole world is able to see your invention and when the there is no objection on that, that means there is international acceptance. The international community is confirming that yes, this is a innovative technology, this is in the interest of the society, this is in the interest of uh, the development of science and technology. So, all these importances of uh, intellectual property help us that intellectual property is very much relevant for achieving these SDGs. Now, WIPO has as I mentioned during the introduction of various SDGs, WIPO has considered this SDG 9 which is talking of industry innovation and infrastructure which is directly relevant to our discussions of intellectual property. Because when you are going to do innovation, you have to protect it and as soon as you protect that innovation, it becomes 
intellectual property right available to you. And uh, therefore, you need to see that uh, if you simply do more and more IP, you are actually helping through WIPO in achieving our SDG number 9. But not only SDG 9, there are various other SDGs also which are directly related to our uh, IP related activities or you can say IP can help in promoting those SDGs like quality education. This MOOC course which we are developing. Now, there are a lot of IP which are involved in effective use of MOOCs. Lot of education is provided through various online media. For example, copyright can be an important IP. If we use copyrights in a fair manner, then more and more people will be interested in developing their online content. Affordable education will be available to all of us, those who are in the remote areas where enough infrastructure is not available. Those students, those communities will also get opportunity to get quality content. So, if we understand the role of copyrights appropriately, that IP will help in promoting the quality education. So, for example, copyright will lead to SDG 4, because to provide quality education, these days we can understand the role of online education. And there are some very good education systems, there are various private ed tech partners where they are providing content, but that may be expensive. So, for that purpose uh, systems like NPTEL are available. And these NPTEL systems uh, which are available freely is providing the quality content, but it is all protected with the help of copyright systems. Gender equality, there is a term which is coming that role of women in science and technology. Now, women in science and technology that is promoting the gender equality. Now, indirectly what we are trying to say, few years back, in fact, uh, WIPO also made the World Intellectual Property Day theme that uh, role of women in IP. So, when more and more women are coming into science and technology, they are creating more IP. It is in one way the women empowerment which is leading to SDG 5 also. We are expecting when we say that gender equality, generally we say that they need to be financially independent and you may expect some kind of more physical labor oriented work for women, so that uh, they get some kind of minimal wages. But I feel a different role for them, they may be more creative and more creative means more opportunity of innovations and you can create the gender equality by promoting in science and technology systems and it will help you in getting more and more IP. SDG 17 industry academia partnership is the simplest example that how partnership is important and with partnership again you will be able to create better IP which will be in the interest of industry also. And uh, there are most of the other IP uh, SDGs which are also possible to achieve with the help of better you can say IP creations in the field of uh, economic and social development. These are various initiatives which WIPO has taken in the field of sustainable development and these are some of the programs which are uh, supporting SDGs particularly through education that means awareness etcetera and uh, collaboration for green innovations. Now, if you remember in one of the session we have discussed about uh, lean IP portfolio that is uh, basically WIPO green only, where you are now seeing that uh, how we are doing the IP creation that is uh, used generally in those areas where uh, 
green technologies are used which are promoting the environmental conservation. So, WIPO has especially uh, promoted such type of technologies which are promoting the environmental sustainability. Then uh, WIPO has also promoted technology innovation and support centers, so that uh, the SDG 4 can be achieved which is providing on the ground IP information and support to innovators helping to unlock innovation, creativity and competitiveness. And uh, all these things are also promoting SDG 9 as well, because innovation, infrastructure and uh, industry are related with this uh, technology innovation and support centers. Inventor assistant programs are also created, so that uh, matching the uh, developing country inventors with various patent attorneys, so that uh, you can easily contact the patent attorney, because many a time uh, if I am an inventor, I do not know where to go and uh, we have this perception that it may be very expensive process. So, we have this kind of hesitation for going for IP filing. So, they give the free legal advice on patent related activities. Then innovation gender gap initiatives, where uh, we are creating more inclusive innovation landscapes uh, by including more uh, people from other genders also. They are creating IP and tourism thing that how IP tools and strategies can support the promotion of sustainable tourism as well as economic, social and cultural development. Just I mentioned like uh, in India, in Himalayas there is so much of uncontrolled tourism and this uncontrolled tourism is uh, creating more damage than the goods for the society, because it is uh, hampering the uh, environmental ecosystem, it is entering into the uh, sensitive zones etcetera. So, all those problems can also be addressed uh, uh, through the IP and tourism initiative of the WIPO and accessible books consortium which is known as ABC and uh, here it is contributes to SDGs by helping increasing the number of books worldwide in accessible formats and making them available in the visually impaired formats also. So, creating various uh, books in the form of uh, digital copies and in the braille formats also, so that uh, not only normal but visually impaired uh, readers can also use these books without actually printing those books. So, uh, different countries including India has also taken some initiatives uh, which promote the uh, sustainable or uh, our commitments for SDG. Uh, in India, we have uh, almost for all IPs e-filing is uh, there and uh, there are incentives also for e-filing like reduced uh, uh, cost of filing etcetera uh, that we have already discussed in one of our earlier uh, you can say uh, session. Then use of AI in office uh, IP offices, uh, there are uh, uh, softwares which are available which are helping us in doing the faster prior art surveys and uh, it is saving the time we are becoming more productive, more efficient uh, with the use of uh, AI related tools. And in India also we have to improve our gender equality in terms of uh, IP filing. So, therefore, uh, for women entrepreneurs, uh, the 80 percent cost is waived off uh, for filing the IP and at all the stages of uh, IP granting process, the cost is reduced by 80 percent. So, that is also a very important initiative of uh, Indian government. Uh, then carbon footprint reduction, for example, whenever you have any kind of examination and query or even presentation to IP office, it is all possible in virtual mode. So, lot of uh, carbon footprint reduction is also happening, uh, IP offices are becoming committed that uh, by minimizing the uh, travel requirement and using more and more uh, virtual tools, uh, we should uh, try to reduce our uh, carbon footprints. Then uh, if I see the various uh, different type of IP assets uh, which are helping in achieving the SDGs, so we know that uh, there is a 15.2 million active patent families worldwide at this moment and uh, around one third of that around one third of that are related to different types of SDGs. So, you can say that uh, there is a high rate of uh, patents uh, which are contributing in one way or other in achieving the SDGs. So, uh, 
out of 17 SDGs, 13 SDGs are represented by these uh, 4.7 uh, million patents. So, we are expecting that uh, for other uh, remaining 4 SDGs also there should be some kind of uh, patents which will be available. So, there will be uh, you can say databases available which also give you SDG to patent mapping out of these 4.7 million patents uh, which patent is related to which SDG. Most of the patents are going to more than one SDG also. It is not that one patent is contributing only to one SDG, one patent may contribute to 2, 3, 4 uh, SDGs also. And uh, this you see that detail mapping of uh, different types of uh, SDGs to different type of uh, uh, patent families. So, obviously, the biggest number is for uh, uh, industry innovation uh, and infrastructure SDG 9. And then uh, large number of uh, patents are in the climate action, then good health and well-being, all those healthcare related uh, patents, uh, responsible consumption, production, affordable clean energy. So, this is uh, a WIPO data which is uh, helping you in getting the around 2.9 million patents are only in the field of uh, industry innovation and infrastructure. And in fact, uh, there are significant number of patents uh, in the field of uh, gender equality also. And uh, you see that around uh, 1 lakh 70 thousand patents are in the field of uh, uh, quality education also. So, this is a very, but this is a dynamic data. I request all my learners, students uh, that uh, whenever they see this video, they can also see uh, WIPO database of that particular year that how these changes are happening over a period of time. This is uh, 2023 data through which we have uh, uh, given you this numbers. If you see the global SDG patent trend, uh, so how uh, these numbers uh, in that uh, US is leading the bar that uh, most of the patents which are related to uh, different type of SDGs are coming from uh, US, then from Europe, China is also significantly doing this. So, these are the 5 important countries uh, which are actually helping in achieving the SDGs through their uh, patent families. This is uh, again a data which is available from WIPO and uh, it is again a dynamic data just for your uh, reference purpose. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, who are actually uh, owning the uh, most number of patents uh, related to SDG uh, achievements. So, uh, like uh, you see Chinese Academy of Sciences uh, is owning around uh, 3805 and uh, you will see that uh, most of the uh, Chinese, uh, Korean, US, Japanese one in fact, uh, German institutions, France institutions are also part of this list uh, that they are owning a large number of patents. Uh, so, these are uh, 25 patent owners from academia and research organizations based on their uh, number of SDG related patents uh, that is there. Then uh, uh, geographical perspective on uh, sustainable innovation. So, uh, if you see that uh, compounded annual growth rate of SDG share. Uh, from 2018 to 2023. So, here you see that uh, how this uh, share is increasing, uh, compounded annual growth is increasing. So, if you see that uh, over a period of time that uh, in Asia and this is in India. Now, in India the rate of growth is uh, not so high as compared to uh, rate of growth in case of uh, uh, China. Here uh, it is uh, around 34 percent and uh, CAGR of uh, SDG share is uh, increasing at the rate of 3 percent while in India it is increasing at the rate of uh, uh, 1 percent. The number of uh, uh, patent families uh, which are coming from China is uh, mind boggling and when you see the number of patents which are coming from India these are very small just uh, 35,000. So, you can see that uh, in India we are slightly uh, behind the uh, China in terms of uh, CAGR, but when we see the absolute number uh, there is a huge huge difference uh, where it is around 27 million and it is uh, just 35,000 in case of 
India that uh, so for a country like India we need to be doing our innovations more into the line of uh, sustainability and uh, considering the SDG as a important criteria for that purpose. So, with this we come to end of this particular uh, session where we discuss that uh, to achieve SDG IP and IP related activities can be very important thing around one third of the global patents uh, are helping in achieving the sustainable development goals for country like India we just saw in the last that our numbers are not so great with respect to our innovations in the field of SDG. So, there is a urgent need that because we are a developing nation we need more and more developmental activities, but our developmental activities should be in alignment with SDG then only this development will be sustainable development. So, with this we come to end of this particular session, thank you very much.